everyone, today I am presenting an explorative study about the multifaceted challenges of the digital transformation and the creation of a sustainable society. We are a group of three authors, a social science university professor, Ana Rodica Steiculescu, and two PhD students, Gheorghe Nadoleanu, who studies social sciences and is the main author of this paper, and me, Emanuela Bran, studying computer science. During this presentation, I will explain the implications of the disruptive COVID pandemic, what is technology from an anthropological and social point of view, the evolution of society in relation to the technologies of the time, challenges arising on the macro and micro levels of society, and global initiatives assessing new threats and proposing urgent solutions related to the digital sphere. The COVID-19 disruption enabled us to escape an unsustainable local maximum point in our societal development. It urges us to accelerate the digital transformation of society and new challenges arise during this fast transition. Daniel Bell said that technology is a form of art that bridges culture and social structure and in the process reshapes both. So, technology is an artifact created in a social context and coming from a cultural background. Then, different stakeholders influence the way technology is used. In turn, technology reshapes society and creates a new cultural context. Rousseau, Locke and Hobbes once debated humans' state of nature and the meaning of the social contract for living in civilization. Today, ethical questions regarding the digital transformation of society arise from a similar background. Is technology empowering or controlling us? Should we humanize technology or digitalize ourselves? Understanding our relationship with technology is a dialectic enriching process. The hunter-gatherer society is characterized by humans living in tribal communities of less than 150 people, which is Dunbar's number. Trust was achieved by knowing each other and social order through mechanical solidarity by collective consciousness or sameness. It was mostly an egalitarian society with exceptions of hybrid seasonal forms of centralization. Forward into the future, after the invention of agriculture and farming, as food supply increased, people could settle down in larger communities, forming cities where trust needed to be guaranteed by a central authority. Again, some forms of ruling were more democratic, while others more authoritarian and abusive. This centralization of power also stratified society. The first industrial revolution brought about a social change in relation to the means of production, Social order was achieved through organic solidarity and bureaucracy helped coordinate activities. Durkheim observed that leaving the traditional community led people to feel disconnected, creating a state of enemy in society. Marx thought that workers experienced alienation in factories due to the fact that they did not see their identity reflected in the final product. Max Weber thought that bureaucracy might keep society prisoner in an iron cage of pure rationality of optimization without any human value related end. Computers brought us to the present information society that harnesses the power of networks. The metropolis is a key element of this globalized society, a fast-paced life space filled with more information and less meaning. Liquid modernity is more about consumerism and less about production. The post-industrial society economy is mostly based on services and the new powerful class are the technocrats with their scientific discourses. Critics of digitalization shaped by capitalism point towards the effects of technology on us and the environment. Also, a general critique of today's capitalism highlights the divide created between and within nations. The ethnocentric globalization, the tendency to commodify everything, including emotions, living in an unhealthy state of comfort and withered communities. It is a glimpse into a dystopian landscape, a cultural context that does not offer healthy choices, nor can it produce sustainable paths from within. Society 5.0 is a response to the previous critiques. 
We are currently transitioning towards this smart society sustained by a culture of knowledge and the fourth industrial revolution technologies. A sustainable society practicing conscious capitalism, having a circular economy of recycling things. The power of the digital opens the outside world by smart things creating an intelligent environment and smart settlements. Technology should liberate us to live human lives and give us the means to shape the world reflecting human values. Different cultures currently adopt the products of modernity differently by globalization, global values with local perspectives, acknowledging the importance of preserving cultural diversity and indigenous systems of knowledge helps us reassert our humanity through the digital transformation. Technology is an artifact and should reflect the values of its human creator. We may now return to a decentralized society living closer to nature. As Durkheim observed, people experience the sacred by feeling connected to society in symbolic forms. Technology should also enable us to grasp the endless complexity of life and feel spiritually closer across space and time. The digital transformation towards a smart society brings about new challenges. Are we implementing digital technologies of social control or empowerment? Digitization means converting analog data to a digital format. Digitalization can be described as creating digital processes. The digital transformation encompasses the other two, built upon them, creating a restructuring at the level of systems. We may view this process as first recreating the real in the digital, letting it mature and bringing back its power into the real world. An example of transformation is decentralization. But we often confuse the network topology with a real decentralization of society. The Internet is such an example of decentralized network built with the idea of open information and communication access. But forces of capitalism and political regimes have reshaped its superstructure. The Internet has even been compared with Foucault's vision of the Panopticon. There are counter-responses through technologies of dissent, such as the Wikileaks, the Tor browser or open source software, which help people escape the power dynamics, but these are mostly used for illicit activity. Blockchain-based technologies can achieve decentralization of society in terms of communication, law, finance, and production. These technologies, which are better known for their use in cryptocurrency, may help execute smart contracts, prove identity for both humans and smart things, provide security for the production chains, a transparent means for collective funding and resource usage, enable personal data ownership and privacy, offer a platform for exchange of resources and money for both humans and artificial intelligence. The fourth industrial revolution technologies may liberate us from the automated work and enable us to build a sustainable circular economy within the digital transformed society. Platforms may help people participate in the gig economy that recently took off. All these changes should provide opportunities of empowerment for people all around the globe to participate actively in society with the help of a decentralized governance blockchain. Living in the intelligent environment creates a bidirectional influence between us and technology. Do we have to digitalize ourselves? or will we succeed to humanize technology? Challenges that arise are related to the following. We need to create emotionally intelligent digital technology that respects our humanity. But for achieving this, we must first be aware of how technology is changing the way we interact and see the world. Researchers are analyzing how generations X, Y, Z and Alpha use technology differently as they are digital immigrants or natives and they have a variety of preferences shaped by the time digital technology entered their life and the phase of technology development that they experienced. Just a bit before the year 2000, the time spent gazing in a screen surpassed the time spent gazing into other people's eyes, and our interaction is more and more mediated by computers. Ethnographical studies helped us understand how new symbols of communication emerge 
in the digital sphere and how our cyber identities are formed likewise the I me couple of classical symbolic interactionism. Through phenomenological studies, we understood how feelings of corporeality are challenged in the volatile and hyper-connected virtual environment. We compared our minds to algorithmic software running on hardware. Neural networks resemble the structures we use to make sense of the world. Computational power and artificial intelligence have surpassed the human mind in narrow specialized tasks. They left us questioning, what is distinctive of us as humans? Quantum computing may bring new metaphors of understanding the mind. Electroencephalogram brain interfaces bridged between our minds and the digital world. Our modern identities are decentered along different narratives. We thus think that understanding ourselves in relationship to the digital sphere is a dialectic enriching process. An intelligent environment populated with empathic smart things can be built under the ubiquitous computing paradigm where services follow the user seamlessly across different environments. Such a soothing habitat can also promote informal and non-formal education and can educate a new generation in a complementary manner outside the sterile school space. In a natural environment that has a human footprint expressed in its design, we may truly feel at home. The World Economic Forum makes risk assessments each year and in the post-pandemic world, challenges regarding the digital transformation arise, some threats having either a powerful impact or a strong likelihood. The deepening digital divide along nations, global regions and social groups is one of them. On one level, this divide is caused by limitations to internet access for vulnerable groups of people. On another level, access to artificial intelligence that enhances business processes is limited to those who already have power. Another challenge is the fast migration into the digital sphere of political conversation, trade and commerce, security-related processes that were once under national jurisdiction, leading to an emergence of a platform planet. This leads to threats such as large-scale cyber attacks with a breakdown of critical infrastructure. In this picture, we see the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals from the 2030 Agenda. We have identified four main lines along which the sustainable development touches aspects of the digital transformation, restating its importance for achieving the agenda. These are closing the digital divide between and within countries, cooperating between government, business and the civil society, global open flow of science, technology and innovation, treating underlying causes and not just symptoms in a holistic approach of society. Through our research, we wish to emphasize the role of sociology and anthropology in creating awareness towards our society and helping achieve our goals as humanity. When we stop reifying technology, we will see it as an artifact and strive to imprint technology with our human values. We have so far introduced you to the context of the accelerating digital transformation linked to the COVID-19 disruption, focused on the transition from the information society to a knowledge society within the larger context of society developments, discussed macro and micro challenges of the digitalization and analyzed global initiatives towards a human and environmentally friendly digital transformation. Thank you for your time. Thank you.